My name is uh, Bob, or uh, as my stage name is uh, HF Badger. And uh, yeah, uh, welcome to Wells.TV. Um, this is uh, my first show, in, um, and I hope to do more in the future. Um, so a little more about me, I am currently a solo singer-songwriter. And I've just released my EP, uh, self-titled, Broken, which is actually the song I just played. And uh, yeah, interesting enough, this song was actually inspired by uh, a hero of mine that actually passed away uh, not too long ago, maybe about three years. 
Um, so there's a band called Fighting Rabbits, and they are a Scottish band in, uh, of course, in the Isle of Scotland, and uh, they played the, you know, they played a couple of shows uh, in and around of Europe, and they actually played one in Singapore as well. Uh, sadly, he took his own life. Uh, he was actually, um, it's kind of ironic because he wrote a song where he talks about swimming in the North Shore and that's where he ended up <laughs> in the North Shore. Um, so that song sort of uh, inspired because he was a huge advocate for mental health, you know, mental well-being. And uh, yeah, I think that sort of uh, inspired me a lot to you know, in fact, he was the one who inspired me to actually go up and and started this whole solo singer songwriter thing uh, many years ago. So, yeah, too bad I can't meet him. But you know, this is a way to pay homage to uh, his name is Scott Scott Hutchinson. Uh, so yeah, Scott, this is for you. <laughs> I think I was very fond of Badgers uh, earlier on because I was watching a particular film from Wes Anderson, which is the fantastic Mr. Fox. And uh, there was a character that was uh, <laughs> pretty, that was pretty uh, intriguing and also I think I kind of uh, fell in love with it, which is the, the Badger. So he's actually dressed up in a power suit and he's a lawyer, you know, so he seems so mild mannered and uh, very eloquent in his, uh, you know, in his speech. But, you know, when he gets very territorial, you know, he gets really angry. And I think, in a way, you know, I kind of relate to Badgers quite a fair bit. So, but I think uh, the, the, the HF uh, came about because um, I was very fond of, um, you know, how in the uh, old, like, uh, Victorian Dukes or, you know, like, sh English ships, you know, they would have, like, HMS, you know, Dauntless or something like that. You know, I wanted some abbreviation at the front, you know. And, you know, it doesn't have to mean anything, you know, like, you know, anyone can place, you know, two alphabets and, and just, um, you know, come up with their own, you know, abbreviation for that word. So I think it's just a fun uh, moniker to, to, you know, play around with. Lah. So the next one I'm going to play, it's actually called Forewarning. And um, interesting story about this song, I, I wrote it based on a fallout, or I wouldn't call it a fallout, but just a tension with someone I know. Relationships, whether it's between friends or, you know, your your, your, your loved ones or, you know, they, they, they tend to have this connotation of like, you know, you if you detour, you know, you might cause something, you know, there's a cause and effect to, you know, your relationship. And I thought, you know, painting it in a form of a car accident was quite interesting. So that's how I came up with this song. So, um, yeah, so this song I released um, uh, a few months ago before the album. And uh, currently you can find the songs on uh, Spotify, YouTube Music, iTunes. Uh, you can even purchase the album on Bandcamp as well, which will include this song. Uh. So uh, this one is called Forewarning and I hope you guys enjoy.
I was in first gear Now it's neutral Looks like I'm walking What it used to be Now it's in time At the moment I felt almost lost I've overanalyzed it ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm paralyzed from the waist deep A feather bender infatuation Should have healed Infatuation should have heed the forewarning, heed the forewarning. A head on collision, I should have. Initially, I was very drawn to a lot of folk music. Uh, I mean, with the likes of like Neil Young, Johnny Cash, that kind of stuff. I mean, almost the bridge of uh, country. But I think now I would consider myself as uh, pretty open to any kind of genre. Um, of course, guitar is still a, a core thing in my in my singer songwriting uh, journey. So yeah, I mean like like in the album that I've just made uh, recently and I've just released on the in August, uh, you know it comprises a lot of genres as well. There's uh, there's a bit of electronic in there, there's a bit of rock in it, there's a bit of um, you know the kind of like a very bluesy or jazzy kind of vibe in there. So it's it's a mismatch and everything. I've always been asked a lot like, oh you know why can't you do something that's popular, for example, you know come up with uh, something really catchy, you know, like uh, recognizable beats, you know, uh, all the gimmicks, you know, the fancy stuff. But I think, I, you know, for me, just do what you, uh, you know, that you're interested. I think you can follow the trend, but, you know, if you don't have your own sound, you don't have your own exploration, you don't have an opinion about music, then, you know, it's it's quite stale. Like. I mean, yeah, for most musicians, we, we tend to borrow a lot of inspirations from, from, you know, the things that we like, you know, but, you know, we try to elevate, we try to do something different. I mean, it's, it's good to keep up with what everyone else is listening, but, I mean, as musicians, you know, you want to aspire to, to change and to, to, to come up with something really fresh. And I think a fresh product is better than something that's in the market, you know. So I think, I, I, I mean, in a way, I am doing this music for myself. And if people are really buying into my vision, then I think that's, that speaks volumes, uh, personally, for me. Yeah. So my next song is actually a, a favorite of mine. It's, it's definitely not mine, for sure. Um, it's uh, actually a song from Fleetwood Mac uh, called Dreams. 
And I think I just love that, it, you know, the simple chord progression of just barely three chords or, or, let, or more, you know, just a few chords, you know. But it was just, kept, you know, beautifully put together and, and I mean, the writing was just very crystal clear and very, you know, it's, I mean, in, in a lack of a better word, beautiful, I would say. So, yeah, I'm going to sing a song. Uh, it's called Dreams. Hope you guys enjoy. Well, my take on, you know, I mean, with the current generation's uh, taste in music, you know, maybe to give a bit more um, 
insights of what I personally think. Um, I wouldn't loosely say like gimmicks, you know, but what what does these things like these like um, artists that you know create this kind of music that draws the attention of the listeners? Is it just flashy lights, costumes, or whatnot, or is it something else? You know, could it be beats? I mean, like you know, back then, like. Um, you know, we talk about 90s grunge, you know, it, was, it wasn't just, it wasn't fashion to begin with, you know, people didn't come up with flannel shirts just because of some, you know, rock artists like, you know, Kurt Cobain would just like wear a flannel shirt and then suddenly grunge rock just burst out of nowhere, you know, but it was the music itself, like it was the, the style of writing, the style of songwriting, the, the composing of the tunes, you know, it was something that captured the essence of what 90s culture or at least late 80s culture is so I think you know looking back like if we look at this generation now you know they're so quick to pick up trends you know or memes or, or stuff like that and and these are all visual and audio cues you know it may and maybe like if we talk about EDMs for example you know what draws them it could be just like oh you know the beats are so good you know and and maybe you know we have to accept that you know tastes do change you know there's always a re-emergence of you know, like Led Zeppelin bands like Greater Van Fleet, for example, you know, they've been playing, you know, uh, and people are saying like, wow, man, like they, they sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. And people, this it's controversial, you know, they sound exactly like <laughs> Led Zeppelin, but there are still going to be people who like Led Zeppelin, you know. And John Mayer seems to be doing so well, you know, over the, over the decades, he's not seemed to be phased out and people still enjoy his music. So I think it's, there's still flavor in, in, in old music, but I think we also have to bridge that with what, you know, what other people are listening as well. I don't think we should pigeonhole ourselves into just, you know, like, you know, our songs and our influences. Yeah. So the next song I'll be playing, it's, uh, it's actually quite a challenge because uh, on this record, um, there's a, it's, a, it's quite a heavy song. It's actually a, quite much like a very rock, rock inspired song. So to translate that as an acoustic set is, is a bit of a challenge, but uh, here I am. So without further ado, I'll be playing the song Alive and I hope you guys possibly enjoy. <laughs>
In conjunction with uh, our Malaysia Day, and obviously previously our Kamadekaan, which is on the 31st of August, I think if I'm anything grateful about this country, aside from the other stuff, which I shall not mention on this YouTube, um, I think you know the fact that we still celebrate diversity is is still a big win. I think it's also a good time for us to even explore what this diversity is for us like I mean has anyone actually bothered to visit you know Sabah Sarawak and and actually live or you know just experience culture in a different way you know I mean we've we've always talked about oh yeah it's uh, you know Melayu, China, India you know but what about the, the rest of the folks you know and I think uh, maybe you know when things are more settled I think it's a good opportunity for us to to really see, you know, the the, the diversity, that the true diversity we have, lah. You know, we West Malaysians, we're like, oh, you know, I've never, you know, you never, you know, never cross our minds about, you know, our brothers and sisters, you know, across the sea. That diversity spawns taste, you know, you know, whether it's the taste in clothing, taste in music, you know, taste in food. We have so many people absorbing different kinds of cultures and there's our subcultures. And like, you know, Malaysians now, I mean, like in Klang Valley alone, you know, people celebrate all types of things. I mean, we talk about music, you know, we, we have people like getting inspired about, you know, rap culture, you know, or skate culture, um, people like jazz, you know. Uh, and now even like with this Korean thing, you know, it, it, you know, everybody loves it, you know, it's not just one group, it's everybody. So I think like because of that diversity, you know, we're so open to new experiences, we're so open to new things, uh, you know, new ideas, I think. I think that's why um, we have it really good here, lah, as compared to a lot of places. I mean, like, take for example, like, you know, the war-torn countries and whatnot, you know, there are so much oppression that they don't have the luxury of actually opening their minds. I think that's, that's something that, you know, always crossed my mind, it's like, if you're in a place like this, like, are you freely able to express or even absorb culture? And we have the privilege to do that. We, as much as we want to complain, we are having it pretty good, you know. And, and, and I think we have to thank, you know, fate lah. <laughs> I mean, fate brought, brought us all in this spot, in this very spot where we're sheltered. Uh, yes, there's occasional typhoons and whatnot, <laughs> but we have pretty good. We got pretty. Good. I mean, would you sacrifice the best Nestle mark if you were to travel overseas? Absolutely not. You, you know, after two weeks, you'd be like, oh my god, I'm just dying for like a packet right now, <laughs> and not a packet of cigarettes. Okay, it's like a packet of like Nestle mark. You know, yeah. So the next song is going to be a song that uh, <coughs> that I listen to it. Uh, very often um, uh, there's a band or at least there's this uh, person uh, by the name of Justin Vernon and he's from a group called Bon Iver and um, this song sort of influenced a lot in terms of both uh, my lyrical style and also you know the melodies that I come up with and uh, the song is called For Emma I hope you guys enjoy.
Hi, if you're just joining in to wells.tv, um, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, great. If you've not made it this far, it's okay. You're still great. If you're just joining in, I just want to share that the, my album Broken is actually available on Bandcamp for sale. Um, I also have a YouTube channel as well and some of, most of my songs, in fact all of my songs are featured in there. Um, so if you could subscribe to my Bandcam or even my Instagram profile, uh, HF Badger, and also on Facebook, um, I'll keep you posted on some live stuff, uh, projects, live shows, or even just updates on my next endeavor. So what made me uh, pursue my passion in singer-songwriting was, I think, um, at the earlier, you know, earlier teens, I, I was playing in bands and, you know, I, was, I had roles as a guitarist and um, I even had to do uh, vocal duties as well. And that sort of cut short, I mean, aside from me playing in, you know, religious houses and stuff like that, uh, I was just gorging on music 24-7, like, without feel like, my parents would be like, are you still on your headphones again? <laughs> and, you know, constantly consuming, even like commuting or even like, um, you know, in my spare time, music has always been like the thing that I consume the most, aside from TV or anything else. And it came to a point where in uh, a stage of my life where career was you know, I was struggling with careers and stuff like that. And at that time, I was also going through a, a bad spell. I mean, a bad breakup with an ex. And that sort of, uh, well, you know, there was a period of time that I was grieving and, you know, not really feeling myself. And that particular moment is when I started to exercise my thoughts and say like, hey, you know, You've always wanted to write music. You've always wanted to compose things that you like. You know, have you ever even thought of doing singer-songwriting? Like, have you ever started making like songs, writing lyrics, composing tunes, and stuff like that? So, I had a mic earlier on, and I, I, you know, I used to play with it like once or twice, and you know, just like record a lot of rambling and some ideas. But then from that moment, I was like, okay why not I give it a shot? So I started writing things and, you know, within six months, I was just looking for places to play at gigs and, you know, the first place I stumbled on was obviously Gaslight and then subsequently, like, I was playing shows after shows and many places. And I think that progression sort of made me solidify my identity as a, as a musician and it's like, okay, you know, I, I know, I, I recognize that I have something, a talent that, you know, it's something that I have obtained from, you know, my years of being exposed to music and, you know, it sort of led me to this path. Lah. And it was a, you know, it was a difficult process because obviously I have no knowledge of making music or, you know, mixing or you know, all the process that goes into making a record. But I did it, like I did it with my bare hands and I thought that was an achievement for me, you know, as a solo artist. Lah. So the next song I'm going to be singing is an unreleased track. Um, I have been playing it in some of the gigs before the MCO uh, with pretty good reception from the crowd as well. Um, so this song is actually inspired by um, a girl, obviously. <laughs> um, so this song is a depiction about, you know, expectations and, you know, realities of uh, a relationship. So this one's called XOXO. Hope you guys enjoy. Shades as I wrestle 
XOXO was actually inspired by uh, a scenario that uh, personally I went through, but it's not, obviously it's not reflected fully in the song, but it's more of a thought actually. Um, I was actually traveling in Korea and I bumped into an old friend and um, Interesting enough, like uh, we've not met regularly, like when she was still staying in Malaysia, but um, we had a lot of mutual friends and we were sort of talking for a period of time. And uh, when I was there on vacation, you know, we hung out and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it felt like everything clicked. But, you know, at the same time, there was this thought in my head, like, nah, I don't think this is going to work. Like, it's a nice moment to have, but you know, it's it's never going to last because, you know, we're in two different hemispheres. I wouldn't say different hemisphere, but I mean we're in two different locations. We're quite further apart, and um, you know, it feels like it's just for that moment, and that's it. So I think what drove me to write this song, I think, was that um, you know, the thought of okay, what, what is actually, you know, what does love entail, you know, what, what do people want in a relationship? And it's easy to forget that, you know, to, to have all the things that you, you like, like, you know, like, oh, holding hands, physical intimacy, you know, communication that kind of thing it's all you know like it's it's nice and it's it's of course some are important for most parts and others but you know we forget that there's also the turmoil there's also um, you know the anger that comes with it there's frustration there's always going to be indifferences between you know two two beings we're all different you know i mean yes similar interests and whatnot but at the end of the day we're built differently you know each and every one of us i feel like this is more of uh, an introspective of you know of this person or at least the character that i came up with in the song if i was to be granted a wish or some form of miracle or power what would i change you know, in my life, I think maybe not so much of a situation, but more of a personality. I think I wish I had more courage, I think. Yeah. And I think why, I guess maybe because like, you know, in my journey as a singer songwriter, I, this, this is a kind of like a late, um, a late start for me because I think earlier on, you know, like, oh, you know, music is not a career or, you know, music is not a thing that you should, you know, put your hopes on, you know, so the, the kind of like messaging and stuff like that. But, you know, that, that sort of suppressed what I have to offer, so to speak. I mean, regardless of whether people like it or not. And yeah, I think I, I wish that if I had a bit more courage, you know, in earlier in my life, I think I, I hope to make, you know, more music, connect with people and, and uh, you know, come up with new things, new projects. Now, I think, yeah, I, I, for me, it's just the, the fact that when, you know, when I have courage at that stage, I think, uh, you know, I don't feel so, you know, anxious or uptight about my own craft, now, so to speak. So, yeah, that's the one thing I would want to have. Right, so this song is a cover, uh, but I don't think anyone has heard it, so you might be the first to listen to it. Um, it's by a group from Australia called Boy and Bear, so they are sort of like when the whole 
folksy banjo thing was like catching up, but they're mostly big in Australia. So yeah, this song is called Southern Sun from Boy and Bear. Hope you guys enjoy. Yeah. 
be of service But doctor I thought If I asked that question earlier Fictional Nightmare is a story about uh, I think the point, the, the lowest point, like for a person to hit rock bottom, basically. Of course, you know, he's, he's um, you know, in the song I describe this person as he's uh, seeking out help and stuff like that. So I think just to give some context, uh, Broken is sort of wrote in almost like in chronological order, it's a chronicle. So starting from, you know, tracks from OCD, right up to um, Forewarning, um, Alive, Broken, and the last song, which is the fictional nightmare. Um, so they all happen in a sequence. And this is sort of like a, a person, you know, descending into madness, so to speak. Yeah. So this is sort of like the climax or like the, the end, the end, the end feel, uh, so to speak. So. He's in a very <laughs> manic state and he's like looking for a way out and obviously there are options that he wished to take but he can't take, you know. So, yeah, I mean like some even pointed out like, yeah, it is a song that sort of reflects a lot on, you know, mental health and stuff like that. And to me, like even the songs that I wrote, is inspired, you know, because I, I mean, personally, I've been through my own share of, you know, um, episodes and sadness. Um, but I think more importantly that I've seen even in other people as well. So I think, you know, sadness tend has a tendency to lend itself, you know, to art, you know. I mean, um, I even had this conversation like, the best songs are usually sad songs, really. And uh, so when I set out to make this album, I wanted to make it like almost like a, you know, a story, you know, a chap, uh, a song for every chapter in a person's life, you know, going through this mental ordeal. So, yeah, this is like the tail end of the track. I mean, the tail of the album, uh, tail end of the album. Yeah. So this is my last song for this evening. Uh, before that, I just want to say thanks to Wells.TV for having me. Uh, you can catch all the performances that they're going to stream on every Sunday at 9 p.m. Uh, that's when we will. That's when they will stream live, um, and the delayed telecast on FP on Monday 10 p.m. So make sure you subscribe, like, and make sure you click the bell icon to be notified for the next performance. And also do follow them on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and even TikTok. Some short reels, you know. Yeah, so if you are, you know, an aspiring musician or if you've got something to show, you can definitely contact them for, you know, to feature your stuff there, you know. Whether it's uh, to perform in a band or you just want to catch some live music at the same time. Whichever you like, you know. Um, so, my name is Bob Wee, and I'm HF Padger. Um, you can catch me on Bandcamp again for my album, To Buy. Or you can stream on Spotify, YouTube Music, iTunes. Definitely not on Tidal. <laughs> I'm not a Tidal fan. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, and um, i see you outside, hopefully. This is OCD. Hope you guys enjoy.
changing the subject Oh, I'm feeling like a reject Is it the way I am? Find myself talking like a lunatic Trying to stay afloat Goodbye. Goodbye.